Hey, good morning. We are going to be talking about how to use gallery walks in Spanish class. So first off, what is a gallery walk and why do you call it that? I always think of it like an art gallery. So usually what you do is you have like materials, so readings or images or something that the students are interacting with, and you hang them around the room and then the students are going to walk and it's kind of like they're at an art gallery because they're going to stop and look at it and they'll interact with it and then they'll move on to the next one. So that's where gallery walk comes from. I really like this because it encourages movement. So you're doing a lot of, well, I usually use them with readings. So you're getting a lot of input and you're getting a lot of reading time, but they're moving. So they're not just like sitting on their desk staring at this paper. So if I just handed them papers to intend, okay, read these, they'd probably feel really overwhelmed because like, it's quite a bit of text on each page. I'm not doing a great job flipping, but I think you can probably get the idea that there's kind of a lot there. And if I were to just like hand them a packet of readings and be like, read, they might feel kind of overwhelmed. So breaking it up and like letting them move around and interact with them that way is, is really manageable and it's really approachable for the students. They don't just feel like, <gasps> You don't have to do all that. You could have it be teacher created, it can be student created, so they could be interacting with projects that they've done, or it can be you know, something like this where you've created the readings for them or you have the readings for them ahead of time. It's also really, <laughs> gotta be honest, it's really low energy for teachers, which is kinda sorta really nice. Like some days you're just like, I'm just gonna hang stuff on my walls, here's what you're gonna do with it, have a great time. Some days it's nice to have activities that don't involve you running, jumping, dancing, and you know, everything. When we're talking about gallery walks, what kind of materials do you need or what kinds of things can you use with them? Infographics are a really great option for gallery walks. Images, like literally just printing off pictures or photos and having them write about, the re about that photo. So like they could go around to each one and say like, you know, where is the person? Something simple like that. Okay. I personally, my all-time favorite way to use them, and you've probably seen me talk about them before, is to do them with really short reading activities. Those are the kind of the examples that I was just flipping through. It's a really good way to get them a lot of input. And another option, I already kind of mentioned this, but I want to make sure I, I don't leave it out, is leaving student presentations up. And if they are digital presentations, you might just have their computers set out around the room. If they are, you know, posters or something like that, you could hang them around the room. So even though there's a lot of different ways you could do it, the general structure is really similar. Here's how I like to set it up. And just a quick preface for anybody who is a traveling teacher this year. This is something that I've been doing for mm, several years at this point, And it has been like, even when I'm not in the same classroom. So even if I have to move from class to class, I know sometimes when we see like, you know, oh, somebody's doing this thing that's set up in their classroom, but I like have to, I don't have a classroom or I have to run from classroom to classroom. I can't do this. You can do this because <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> so like, I'm telling you from experience, you don't have to have your own classroom to be able to do activities like this. So first off to set it up, you just spread the materials around the room. My favorite way is to tape them to the walls so that they're really spread out or if my classrooms are near each other, I would use the hallway. So that way my students, so then I'd a, a, I didn't have to hang up multiple copies and B, then my students would kind of go out and we'd, you know, use the whole hallway as a space. I've done it outside before where we just taped it along, literally just put them along the building. You hang up your materials or you spread them around the room. And really in order for this to be successful, you need your students to have some sort of structure to the activity. If you just say, okay, go, look at these things, it's, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a madhouse. So I usually like to do some sort of graphic organizer or questions or something to give them some structure. And the thing that I do most frequently, these ones are hung up around the room. I like to do things like find someone who. So they'll read all of these things and it'll say something like, um, find someone who has gym class but doesn't like it. And then like, well that, in this case, is this person. And so they record her name on the sheet. And sometimes I do things like a, a graphic organizer where they have to compare multiples. So maybe after we've done all of the readings, they pick two and they say, okay, what do these two have in common? What's different? What looks up, you know, how did this is a school schedule one? So what does she have in her schedule that she doesn't and what do they have in common? 
what does she like what doesn't she like okay and then we do like a third comparison where it's like, okay now put you in the mix what do you have in common with her what do you have in common with her likes and dislikes things like that so really structured activity even though the flow of the day is going to feel really low energy it's going to feel less structured because they're going to just be walking around kind of doing this thing that that handout those questions and that graphic organizer are going to help them say okay this is what i need to be doing this is what i'm looking for they're going to be actually getting the input and be focused on that last thing you need or the last thing that i like to include when i do gallery walks is to have some sort of like fast finisher or sponge activity people call them different things but basically something for the student to do that is related to the topic when they're all done so they've you know gone around the rooms they've looked at all the gallery walks they've done their their first graphic organizer or their first find someone who like now what i and i kind of mentioned that earlier i like to have them do like some sort of comparison writing or something like that i always have a page or two where like okay kids now you're gonna pick up this one and you're gonna do this so I'm like these are like my favorite things that i do all the way throughout a year so I want to make sure that you know like how they work and and maybe if you're watching you're probably like okay you keep holding up these papers but last year we were all online and that's not helpful okay I got you I brought my computer I'm gonna show you kind of how I do this so if oh this is the same example look at me go if your students are digital I made a Google Slides version of literally the exact same thing so it's all of the readings that I usually would print and hang out around the room in, let's see, how can I do this? Does that work? A Google Slides. So they would just flip through them. There's some of those are like some of the questions that I was talking about, like some of the graphic organizers, some of the like follow up scaffolded writing activities, all of the things that I would do as fast finishers, fast finishers, all in one set of slides. So after I'd made those, I got a few messages from people that said like, you know, I really like these, but my novices just feel really overwhelmed by seeing all those at once. So two things that I would kind of mention for that is first, if you're going to do like the Google Slides version, I would split it into chunks. So I would probably give them one set of slides that is like all of the readings that they need and then the like the questions that they would go with the readings for. So then I would make another copy that is the readings that they need and the like fast finisher activity. So that way it feels like it's less all at once and the students are like, oh, there's this huge Google Slides presentation and that's, you know, that's kind of scary and overwhelming for them. Just like I was saying, right, if we didn't cut these up and hang them around the room and they just got a big packet, it would be kind of scary and overwhelming to them so that kind of splitting up the slides is a lot more manageable and a lot more approachable and then you could do it as like a warm-up activity the next day so maybe you only give them the questions one day and then as a sponge one of the writing activities and then the following day afterwards as like a quick warm-up say okay now we're going to do this writing activity that's building off the stuff we did yesterday and you can kind of stretch it for more than one day but <laughs> i wanted to do one more option just because you know, sometimes it's nice to have options and to be flexible. So I also made, they're the same thing. There's a reading comprehension set for Google Slides and there's a reading comprehension set for Boom Cards. And the reason why I did both is because I know some people haven't tried Boom Cards yet or they're not like, you know, last year in the middle of everything, it was too much to say, here's another platform to learn. So I just wanted to make sure both were available to you, but I wanna, I'm want i gonna show you the Boom Cards version and just know that Google Slides is the same they're just going to drag it over and use spot check instead so it's the same setup hopefully you can see right this is actually this one is from the in less you the set that i have but it's the same right there's a reading and there's some sort of picture over here the students just have three true or false comprehension questions so that's kind of again another option that you could do with them to get the students to kind of start interacting with the reading that could be before you even do the gallery walk or it could be after they do the gallery walk for another quick check. Or instead of, if you're like, we don't have time for a full gallery walk, I can't use a whole class period, there's a third option for you. Those are all of the different ways that I've kind of like started tweaking. So like the OG, the original way that I like to do gallery walks is to hang them up around the room. But distance learning <laughs> or virtual learning or whatever you want to call it. So there's also the Google Slides version of the gallery walk and there's the Google Slides and Boom Cards versions of the reading comprehension activities that are based on the gallery walk readings. 
Okay, yes, I have these for you that are already made. I mean, I wanted to show you how I do them so that way, and give you some ideas, so that way if you didn't want to get the pre-made ones, you can still use this activity. Like, you don't have to use the things that I've already made to make this activity. I just wanted to let you know that I do, <laughs> I do have them, so if you don't want to have to, like, write them all. Which sets do I have? I have a set for In La Ciudad, where they focus on, like, buildings and prepositions of location. Las Mascotas, where they talk about, like, each kid shares kid shares about their animals and what they need and how to take care of them. The La Familia one that I showed you. I have a few that are like introductions and personal descriptions where it's the person shares their name and some like basic facts about themselves. And then the In La Escuela and the daily schedule one that I showed you. Hobbies and pastimes. So like things that they like to do, things that they usually do and who they do them with and like what they need to do them and how often because adverbs of frequency were always in that chapter for me. So how often. Oh, animals. Like, like they're in a zoo kind of thing and they describe what the animals are. That one's really fun because there's a lot of little cognates and they learn little like facts about the animals. Okay. <laughs> and each set. All right, so here's the other piece. Th those are all the, the things that I already have made for you. Each set of those comes with printable readings, Google Slides readings, boom cards readings, and Google Slides readings. The, the reading comprehension ones that I shared you about and then all of the comprehension activities that go with it so like something that they can print off and do with it something they can do as a fashion finisher something that they could do as like a writing extension activity like <laughs> all of those things <laughs> okay and I'm like and 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 I just it's really hard for me to explain all the things that are in it because I, I just there's so many ways you can use it and I just kept adding things to it so all of these things are included in one big bundle. So there's a bundle of 13 different sets of readings like this with all of that stuff that I just mentioned for each single one. Like, it's like one of my favorite activities that I would use every chapter all year round. So I just really wanted to make sure that I shared with you how can you use this in your classroom? What are some ways that this works for you? How I like to use it? And to just share that with you so that way if this is something that you're interested in trying, now would be the time to grab it. <laughs> If you need anything at all, I am here. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. You have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.